Um. Why is the sky red? What did I do? What did I do? Um. I think. Who? What the hell? What was that? What are these obelisks? That's a triangle. They've made a triangle in it. No. Oh sh! <laughs> oh. Well, Are you supposed to be out of the booth. I'm getting back in the booth. Da, 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 da. He's like, no. <laughs> da, 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 da. No. <laughs> now, and Mike is sitting over there. Right at you and you're just like. Nah. Mike is just oh, like sorry, that. I didn't know that's directed at me. I thought it's you were just good. like. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike just looks back at you and be like, they wouldn't fit you. My boots would. Fit. Probably, probably the boots would. Yeah. I I can't ride a motorcycle so. <laughs> I ain't got a motorcycle or anything like that, but I. But we do have weapons. Yep. We do have guns. <laughs> Lots of guns. So beware if you ever break into this house. Yeah. And yeah. a dog. <laughs> and Doge. Although he'd more than likely like like I lick you to death. Yeah, I don't know that he's going to be that dangerous. Nah, nah. But he's a good boy. You're not supposed to tell people. What? Well, so somebody Asher's breaks a sweet in, boy. they don't know. Well, that's true. They're they like, see Asher. And be like, oh shit. And run. <laughs> well, no, dude. Someone comes to our front door and he starts barking and going up to the window. They're going to say, oh shit, that's a pit bull. And then they fuck off. I mean, I will say, he sounded really mean when I first met him. And after Nate was like, he's okay. He was fine. So yeah. I feel like if somebody just came crashing in, he would probably actually be pretty dangerous. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. I don't know about dangerous, but he'd probably scare them. Yeah. Just probably do the... Oh, 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 he'd probably oh. do the... Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Yes. Probably, yeah. like, scare the shit out of them and make them run away. Yeah. Oh, imagine this. Imagine, like, this would be the bullshit scenario. Someone, like, tries to kick in the door, and they, like, kick in part of the glass, and their, their like, leg is inside the glass, and then all of a sudden he comes up barking, and then they cut their leg on the glass oh. on their way out. Next thing you know, they sue us. Right. They and sue you. Yeah. They sue... That's bullshit, by the way. You, Cutting you, their leg on your you, broken yo, window that they broke. Yeah, this is one of the most bullshit scenarios I've ever heard of. Dude tries to break into this woman's house. Like, yeah, tries to break in, in you know, B&E. He falls in through the skylight and hurts himself by falling on her butcher's block and cuts himself with one of the knives. You know what happened? He was charged with breaking and entering, but he sued her for reckless endangerment and basically uh, won, I think, half a million dollars. That's crazy. That's yeah, stupid. That is absurd. Did they, like, did, were they not able to appeal that? I mean, that just sounds... I think they were able to appeal it, but the fact that a circuit court handed out a ruling like that is nonsensical stupid. of the highest order. Yeah, whoever's in that position as judge needs to be removed. Yes, immediately. Because like, what the fuck are you re smoking? Reckless here? endangerment. I'm I'm sorry, but the dude was reckless when he tried to break into her home. And it should be absolutely legal to recklessly endanger anyone who recklessly breaks into your home. Yes. <sighs> anyway, yeah. So the Terminator. This is a uh, <laughs> little rant there, but hey, that's that's you know how we do. I See, you, you, talk, you were all serious with that when you talked about kicking in the door. I thought you were going to do a callback to the scary video thing we just watched. Like oh. the, the door like kicks them back because the gin is like haunting it. <laughs> like you have like a you have like a gin in your house, so the dude's like kicks it and just like whoa, bam! Yeah, kicks the door open. He starts stepping in. Whoa, just like he Crap, falls. The door just kicked my ass. <laughs> the door like, just kicked my ass. It's not. It's not a gin. You just have a roommate and her name is Jen. Yeah. It's like, it's like, Jen, stand behind the door. Okay. Now, whenever the door comes open, you kick it back as hard as you can as soon as he starts to step in the door. It'd be like that scene from Home Alone. It's just like, <clears throat> all of a sudden, Harry kicks in the door. Ha, ha, ha. Tool bag opens up. <laughs> Instead, the door comes back and slams him in the face. Uh, but yeah. Ever since Micah started reappearing here over the last uh, few months, people have been begging, quote, begging for us to go back and watch the Terminator reviews done by the Nostalgia Critic. And I'm just like, Caleb's not here, though. Have we never done these? No. Really? No. 
because uh, they these originally started coming out uh, like just after the pandemic, uh, back when you know your job picked up and you had and you know you didn't really have a control over I don't really your schedule. Re- really remember because I can confidently tell people that I'm in probably over a thousand videos on the internet now. Yes. <laughs> oh, I would say at least a few thousand. It's like like two, three thousand. But these came out, and a lot of people were begging for us to react to them with you. But unfortunately, it was that time where you were, you know, focusing on your job and everything. And now that things have calmed down for Mike a little bit, not going to say like they've completely calmed down, but it's his time is a little more open. We're going to go ahead and check these out because uh, we're going to start with the first one. I know people are just like, just go ahead with the second one. No, 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 no. Patience is a virtue. And there was a Terminator 1 before there was a Terminator 2. And I think it is a great film in its own right. I still think Terminator 2 is probably one of the best action films of all time, period. But Terminator 1 as a scary concept and how it was executed for as little budget as they had, what a film. What a film. And a testament to just how great of a filmmaker uh, James Cameron is. But anyway, we have here Terminator 1, The Terminator, uh, the review by the Nostalgia Critic. Let's check it out. Here we go. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hell yeah. Terminator month. (laughs) Hello and welcome to Terminator month. Nader, it's a working title. Like a lot of you, I have had a fascination with these movies. From the first two entertaining and groundbreaking films to the other ones. But those first two films... The third one wasn't that bad. It's hard not to still be invested. Arguably Arnold's most famous role, the story of a killer machine arriving from the future may not be the most mind-blowing, but the character's stunts, action, and performances make it one of the most iconic. Often quoted, satirized, and paid homage to, the Terminator movies have inspired a lot in terms of effects, style, and overall attitude. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. You'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll be back. You know how after Star I'll Wars, everyone back. was doing something similar. Or yeah, except for Marvel nowadays, movie. for for Arnold being as old as he is, is like, oh my back, <laughs> oh my back, oh my back. Uh, uh, no. Come on, Micah, give us one. I was just, I was just thinking about like. Uh, my favorite was uh, the Ke- Kevin Pereira dressed up like the the T one thousand for a Halloween episode of Attack of the that. Show, and he comes in right with like the all messed up eye and everything. He goes, "Where is your housekeeper? Where is your housekeeper? Who is your daddy and what does he do?" Please, everybody was copying the same thing. The early Terminator films were the same. Suddenly, a lot of sci-fi was about stopping an evil future. Everybody had black coats and shades. Killer robots were suddenly all over the place. Most of them had that metallic blue tint. And by God, liquid metal practically ruled the 90s. <laughs> yeah, this 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 effect took over so much. Oh my God. This began with the little movie that killed with James Cameron's original, The Terminator. 1984, baby. Released in 1984 on a budget of only six and a half million, Terminator was a surprise hit that surprised nobody more than its main villain, Schwarzenegger. He was originally called in to play Michael Biehn's role as others were considered for the deadly machine, including Mel Gibson, Sylvester Stallone, and even O.J. Simpson, who was turned down because Cameron didn't believe he could be a convincing killer. <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, but could you imagine Stallone and Schwarzenegger in the same film, though? Pre Expendables, of course. Yeah. Dude, that uh, that'd be amazing. When Cameron met Arnold, though he instantly saw him in the role. Arnold was hesitant, though, because he didn't want to play an emotionless robot. He arguably had been playing that enough already. <laughs> but he agreed, saying the film was underground enough that if it failed, it wouldn't hurt his rising star too much. Not only was it a hit, though, it was a hit that led to sequels, spin-offs, countless merchandise, and cemented Arnold as one of the most iconic movie stars of all time. But with so many years having gone by, does the film still hold up, or is it a case of the right audience at the right time? I still think it holds up. I watched it recently, and it still like holds up really well. 
Now, some of the f effects look dated, but... Especially in, like, 4K. But still, for the time. Dude, some of the stuff... Uh, the old uh, Mortal Kombat was playing on TV, and Caleb had it on. And, like, looking at some of the sets, I'm like... Dude, that looks fantastic, because yeah. it's all real. Yeah. Like, the CG in that was kind of wonky. But but the backgrounds and, the and like, the, the set design. But, like, Goro and stuff. Like oh, amazing. the puppetry. Yeah. yeah. And that was Stan Winston, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it was like, this movie looks so good, though. Yeah. And it's, like, it's actually there. It's not, you know. Yeah, it's not like you're pretending that everything is just... Yeah. It's like you you have to talk to someone who's not here. And thus, you're like Ian McKellen and have a breakdown on the set right. of The Hobbit, which, this is not why I got into acting. It's like, damn. And, and I miss that about film. I miss I miss films that do that. And I'm, I'm hoping that in the future we're able to do more stuff like that, but yeah. oh well. But hey, it's, it's so easy. Just CG everything in there. They did it in The Avengers and it worked. Like, but that's like... 300 and plus billion do million dollars thrown at thrown at the problem so I think that's part of why the Mandalorian was so good because like they had that huge screen and they would use the Unreal Engine to like, yes. basically project the world around them that was so great they, they could see it like it, they didn't feel like there was on an empty green screen set and that's and you see I, I want that to be more of a thing you know because you know you can transport someone to that world if you know you have that technology instead of just like Throwing them on a green screen matte background or anything like that, yeah, it's... Well, let's take a look and see if this is still a sci-fi classic. This is The Terminator. Also, Doug's Doug's tie is, like, really loose in this. His tie is usually, like, up here. It's loose, but it's down here, almost to, like, the middle of his chest. We open in the very modelly looking future of 2029. Man, Biden's stimulus was too much. If you think that joke is instantly dated, take a listen to the opening music. So, one of the interesting things about the Terminator films is they're mostly timeless. There's little hints of the time period it was made in, of course, but for the most part, you can put on any of them and not guess right away when they were made. Except for this one. The 80s is dripping off this like a Reaganomics episode of He-Man. But it's surprisingly not a bad thing here. The part of the 80s being focused on is not as much the bright colors and upbeat songs. It's more the dark, gritty, rebelliously unshaven side you don't usually see as much in the 80s section of Halloween stores. It fittingly adds to the film's atmosphere rather than distracts. The opposite of Flick's life. What are you listening to? New Kids on the Block. We take place in the 80s! Okay, God! <laughs> yeah, that's a... It was a bit much in that film. It was one of the big dis detractors, is that the subtlety of, like, it's set in the 80s! Like, that's one thing that was a bit, uh. It's because they were trying to copy Stranger Things, but they did it less subtly than Stranger Things. Yeah. Stranger Things did it with set storytelling. Yeah. Stuff like that. Uh, for instance, Ray, like, the sign out front. Reagan Bush 84. At the same time, then they did the recent season where they did basically the same thing because her favorite song had to be Running Up That Hill. So that and was not, pretty much a we take place in the 80s. Which I don't hate on Kate Bush and that song. That song's great. Placebo's version is better. But still withstanding. It is still like... it. it I guess they needed something like that to really like tie Matt... Because... People tie their depression to, like, music and stuff like that, and, you know, I guess that was a way for them to, like, have Max express herself. Mm. I don't know. At least to have more of a story behind it rather than just, like, hey, what you listening to? Like, Yeah, know. exactly. It, yeah. Whoa, I'm a black guy in a film about a killer. I know what happens to me. <laughs> Weather calls for a 60% chance. Naked Austrians. <laughs> oh. I guess it's a 100% chance. Dude, he really was Mr. Universe. Yes, he was. Nice night for a walk, eh? He approaches a street gang led by Cameron favorite Bill Paxton, who I think is challenging him to a gap off. Fuck you, asshole. Game over, man. 
Not gonna lie, I always like to think he went home and became Chet, making Weird Science an unofficial sequel. And I would argue the most diverse of the Terminator films. This boy talking about on the telephone, man. What oh, the yeah. hell? Goddamn, we know there's a telephone. I wouldn't <laughs> win that argument, but I'd make it just because it's funny. <laughs> Once he gets covered up, another visitor from the future arrives, Kyle Reese, played by Michael Biehn. One of the things I immediately enjoy watching this again is how much like an 80s comic book it is. Sometimes it's a little jarring, like Arnold punches a guy and it awkwardly cuts to him just on the ground lifeless. But if you imagine the angles and cuts like comic book panels, it really captures that 80s style of, oh, what's a good name for it? Dirty Shadows. Ashcan. Because uh, there was a style that, no, Eastman and Laird called it this. They called it Ashcan. Because basically it's just like dirty, gritty has a has just like a mostly it is in color here but still the shat the harsh shadows and the bright spotlights are the predominant factor in the shot and Cameron did a great job emulating that yeah I like that kind of sounds like a Tim Burton porno spoof oh hey boy, <laughs> you just see a real bright light I smell someone stealing pants down here no seriously how did this chase start he gets away, and we're introduced to Sarah Connor, played by Linda Hamilton. She's a waitress who talks to restaurants. One of James Cameron's many future ex-wives hmm. at the time of this. Front statues. God, just want me big buns. So there's that. And she's being hunted by the Terminator, who what is up with that jacket? I mean, I know it's the 80s, but that looks like a janitor uniform got surprise ironed by the disco stew coat. How is it people mock the glasses in three, but this gets a free pass? <laughs> While well, he soft borrows a ride, we're shown that Sarah doesn't exactly have the world's greatest job. Look at this way, in a hundred years, who's gonna care? I still feel bad about that ice cream <laughs> thing. <laughs> Strange thing to think about being a skull. The Terminator enters a gun shop ran by, oh, Dick Miller. That's nice, I rarely see him in cult 80s movies. The Uzi 9mm. You know your weapons, buddy. Any one of these is ideal for home defense. You know, I've never owned a gun shop, but is it safe to show off your gun so close to the <laughs> ammo? <laughs> See you in Gremlins. <laughs> Love Gremlins. Once again, another one of the classic 80s Love films. Love Gremlins so much. Uh, you and I talked about that uh, in one video. And just like you, We were talking about the old lady getting shot out the top of her staircase by the electric chair. Love it. <laughs> Love it. That's so good. He loads up and gets ready to axe off every Sarah Connor in the L.A. area. Sarah Connor? Yes. Her day she was here. I'm Susan. In fact, no hobbling, Glace. It doesn't take long to figure out there's a few less Sarah Connors in L.A. today. Brutally shot to death in her home this afternoon. Once again, Sarah Connor, 35, That's your name, dude. mother of two. This doesn't bother her too much as she gets on her totally not Jetson shirt. George has red hair. They're completely different people. Oh. It's a phone call meant for her roommate. Or some rip the buttons off your blouse one by one. Who is this? Sarah? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, as entertaining as this all is, I am just fascinated by the clothing choices in this movie. And it's 80s, bro. Come on. That's it, it was very like avant-garde and pop art inspired back in the 80s, and that was ugh. My mom showed me some of the shirts that she had back in the 80s. <laughs> I'm glad that stuff stays in the 80s. Einstein tank top. It's like they're getting their wardrobe at the Goodwill for Goodwill. Sarah Ann Connor, secretary, 35, shot six times. Meanwhile, at the police station, a detective discusses the impressive pile of Sarah Connors adding up. He's played by Lance Hendrickson, who you may want to thank for this entire franchise. You see, one of the possible financers didn't think the idea of the Terminator was very scary. So Cameron had Henriksen dress up like the character, kick open his door, and sit down at the guy's desk. When he asked if that scared him, he replied, hell yes, and agreed to the movie. <laughs> of course, didn't play That's it. awesome, dude. <laughs> and you wouldn't see pitches like that anymore. Like, they don't do pitches like that anymore. Everything's safe. Everything's like, just within the neat little box that Amazon or Netflix or... Disney Plus or who the hell ever just mm, the part, but Cameron me. made it up to him by casting him as an android <clears throat> in Aliens. I'm sure he loved it. Oh. <laughs> Better than mortal man deserves. It's a look that says I should be helping a starship find whales. 
<laughs> Gotta give credit. This is one of the few good fake outs I've actually seen in a horror movie. <laughs> It's legit creepy because the past women were killed at the door. But her roommate also has a date, so it works as a jump and totally legitimate reason for the Aww. scene to exist. Nice iguana. Also, this is a little creepy. Dude, this isn't Baskin Robbins. You don't sample a woman and then pick another one. It's weird. As much as I love that first fake out though, this one seems a little silly. Oh, were we supposed to assume Arnold was dropping snacks for a minute? I thought he'd be on top of the fridge! <laughs> he does end up taking her and the boyfriend out, only to discover neither of them were Sarah Connor. Hi there. I, I, I fooled you. You're talking to a machine. It's okay. Machines need love, too. I have no idea you are romantic. If you're still alive, we could do it. Wait, what's it? I'm John's father. Ninja, this is Sarah. Pick up if you dare. Oh, I guess that makes more sense. Sarah calls the police at a local club and finally gets through. But I don't want to leave. I think there's a guy following me. Don't go outside or even to the restroom. I'll have a car there in a hot minute. Okay. Sadly, a hot minute in California means three hours. Yes. Naturally, the terminator finds her first and invites himself in. Oh. Don't worry, Lou. I'll get him by climbing up his ass. Seriously, where did she go? She went down on the ground Spots to, like, check on him. exactly having the fastest reflexes. But Reese stops and tries to get her to safety. Come with me if you want to live. Oh, stealing from <laughs> Casper. Low. Jesus. There we go. Oh, good. Reese gets Sarah out, but the Terminator steals a cop car to chase them. This is 1L19, westbound and Olympic approaching Overland. 1L19. I did that well. What's that, Rick? Oh, uh, you weren't supposed to hear that. Um, shoot yourself. Well, okay, Rick, if you say so. <laughs> they hide out in a parking garage as Reese explains he's there to protect her from the killer cyborg. The Terminator's an infiltration unit. Microprocessor controlled. We think he has Intel Pentium insights. Flesh, skin, hair. Austrian accent is designed to blend in. After several times trying to escape, Sarah finally goes along with what he's saying. Can you stop it? I don't know. I mean, I'm from the future, and like 10 of these have been sent back, so I'm assuming it's possible. Mm. He lets her know that the reason she's targeted is because she'll be carrying a child who will grow up into the freedom fighter who will lead the resistance against the machines. Defense network computers, trusted to run it all. They say it got smart. A new order of intelligence. Look, just take this pamphlet, QAnon and you. It also talks about how the lizard wow. people are on the rise. Wow. They lose him, but the real police show up, and Sarah says they're outgunned. <coughs> and I'm sorry, why are people from the future always dumbasses? Skynet had to wipe out his entire existence. Connor sent me to intercept, and they blew the whole place. At least in something like 12 Monkeys, they clarify time travel can mess with you mentally. But in these films, there's always an idiot who thinks if they tell the truth, everyone will believe them. Yeah, and I also love the fact that Dr. Silverman is, is like one of the mainstays of the franchise throughout the whole damn thing. The only bit I love it so much. Everybody's reaction to him. I could make a career out of this guy. This is fucking great. So Reese is crazy? In technical terminology... He's a loon. I believe the official term is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Sarah, this is what they call body armor. Our tack guys wear these. It stops bullets. Do you know what bullets are, Sarah? While well, the definition of mansplaining is explored, the Terminator fixes his eye at a nearby hotel. My fixes removes completely. These effects are a little dated now, but given the time and budget they had, they're pretty mind-blowing. Oh yeah. Creating a robotic head that's supposed to look human both close-up and in medium shots was pretty damn ambitious. And let's face it, it still looks better than a CGI rock. I'm afraid oh, yeah. Sarah oh, that's no doubt. That still is one of the worst CGI things I have ever seen in my entire life. Oh, no. This is followed by him entering the station requesting to see Connor. I'll be back. Oh, now they're stealing from Last Action Hero. It's nothing sacred. <laughs> of course, this line wouldn't mean much if it didn't have a memorable follow-up. Oh. Sorry, sir. The drive-thru's in the back. He 
shoots up the place, but Reese escapes, helping Sarah get out alive. They hide under a bridge when their car runs out of gas. Cold. Freezing. Being nighttime in LA, it is 70 degrees. <laughs> he gives her his coat and she mends his wounds as they make small talk. Tell me about my son. He has your eyes. What's he like? Grumpy. He likes to yell at DPs a lot. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I've heard that whole rant about ten times and it still makes me crack up. You're a nice guy, but we are done professionally. <laughs> this triggers a kind of flashback. I mean, this does technically happen in the future, where he remembers surviving with one of the last armies of humans. <laughs> <laughs> this cracked me up the first time I saw it. So what's on the TV tonight? It's always fire! Ooh, a demolition man dinner. He looks over a picture of Connor just before a Terminator breaks in and shoots up the place, causing the picture to burn. So... I'm kinda torn on this because these scenes are almost pointless. What I mean is, the picture is important because it shows time is a never-ending loop by the end. Which granted is nuked pretty fast in the sequels, but a part of me thinks the films would have been creepier if we never saw the future. If it was just these two chasing each other, we saw the machine at the end, and we had to put together what the future looks like just based on this image, our imaginations could fill in how terrifying it could be. However, with the semi-low budget look, showing the future does help legitimize it a bit. No matter how convincing BN is, it could still come across as cheap if Armageddon was only based on his performance. It's a moot point because you have to see it in the sequels anyway, but I always wondered if it would be scarier if the future was never seen. Then again, it does distract from odd lines like this. I was dreaming about dogs. We use them to spot Terminators. And we occasionally watch them instead of TV, though sometimes the fire really was on fire. Just as they find themselves a motel, the Terminator is leaving his, leading to easily the funniest scene in the movie. You got a dead cat in there or what? Fuck you, asshole. It's <laughs> easily, like... It's still good. It like, is. It holds up. It's still great. It's a special <laughs> moment when you find someone else who also uses that as their ringtone. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you, asshole. Fuck you. <laughs> you were calling just to make that joke work? Thank you. <laughs> Sarah can't help but wonder, though. Is there a Mrs. Come With Me if you want to live? Was there someone special? Someone... Girl, you know. No. No. They could never get over my fake scar falling off. Good luck not noticing that every time you watch this scene. John Connor gave me a picture of you once. I came across time for you, Sarah. I love you. I always have. So their oh romance boy. is a bit sporadic. Yeah. They've only known each other for a day and he's already confessing his love. I love you. I always have. We shall be married in the morning. But the adrenaline of the situation, I guess, kind of fuels it. Though, looking at a picture every day saying one day I'm gonna bang my commander's mother still comes across as a strange me cute. <laughs> yeah, so weird. <laughs> they share a night of passion, but the Terminator... Funny enough, I... <laughs> there was a... There was a uh... I forget which one it was. It was a... It was basically this person online explaining, just like, my dad was my high school English teacher. And the first class that I had with him, he basically opened the day by saying, Hello, class. I just wanted to let you all know that I am sleeping with at least one of your mothers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the, the, for, the original person said, this was the beginning of my villain, villain origin story. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. Oh. Finds them pretending to be Sarah's mother. I love you too, sweetheart. To be fair, a lot of women think their mothers are emotionless machines. However, they steal hey. her to escape, outwitting it. <laughs> the 
Terminator steals the truck to try Get and run them out. over, but they throw a bomb into the tailpipe, blowing up their rear projection. Yeah. One of the great things about camera movies is they often have a surprise climax. And it arguably started with Terminator, as it really feels like the fight is over. They even showed off what you would assume was left of their effects budget. But that just makes it all the more terrifying when this happens. Oh yeah. He's angry. No way out. No way out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's freaky as hell when you discover not only is it not dead, but it's a metal skeleton with an evil brow. An evil brow like one of the skeletons from Army of Darkness. Awesome. Though, okay, the stop motion does take down the fear factor a little bit. I love the creepy... I've actually seen a restoration like channel do a 60 fps mod on it uh, to make it to make it like more smooth and then they put it in the 24 frames per second film and it works a lot better but the stop motion still for the time dude i mean just look at that that's terrifying and also the awkwardness of its movements just uh I movement love it. stop motion usually has but this moves like jack skellington just discovered eggnog it's a little silly looking you heard the good news. Skynet saves. You replace my penis. How kind. <laughs> Mine didn't do that. Usually. I'm getting the feeling of coming in the gym. I'm getting the feeling of coming at home. So I'm coming day and night. <laughs> it's terrific. Yeah, he did. This begins the Michael Bean death curse. Don't worry, Mikey. People will know you be Sean Bean's record someday. Yeah. But even then, the machine's not dead. I'll buy your legs off! You terminated fucker! She finally gets him in just the right spot and smashes him flat. Hydraulic... We're I was going to, to say, go. hydraulic press, much like wood chipper, always wins. Yeah. Cool. As you probably put together, Sarah is Welcome to Hydraulic Press channel. Will be the <laughs> Today we will be... Hydraulic press on the T-1000. That's T-800. Oh, T-800. T-800, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, and uh, we're going to crush him and hopefully uh, save the future. <laughs> Holy shit, we cut. We kill him. We save the future. <laughs> Whoa, his oh. eye exploded. <laughs> Savior of the future and, well, there just aren't that many mommy books about that. What did he just say? By the way, hydraulic press, if you ever see this, I am not making fun of you, dude. I love you. No, dude. we love you, dude. Like, uh, I'm trying to tribute you. Yes. <laughs> we, you are you are the best like you are the best finished channel on YouTube by far. Even though he's four foot nothing, he's somehow got a high angle picture of you. He said there's a storm coming in. I know. It's the box office returns for Dark Fate. Oh, <laughs> and that was the Terminator. It's very 80s, but it's very awesome. Yes. When you consider one of the most expensive films of that decade was Rambo 3 at 63 million, and this only cost 6.5 million, it's amazing this film turned out as well as it did. I have no problem believing Arnold is a killer machine. Cameron even said the accent added an almost synthesized quality, like the machines hadn't quite gotten the voice thing figured out. The characters aren't Shakespeare, but they're likable enough. Plus, there's so many quotable lines, suspenseful moments, and unforgettable imagery. If T2 oh, yeah, is the, the bright red eyes of there. the series, this is certainly the original Mad Max. Oh. More gritty and low budget, but going above and beyond with what they had. Can it be corny? Sure, but that's part of the fun. And it balances out with the more gory and intense moments. It has the charm of a low budget passion project, but the feel of a big budget Hollywood epic. It's one of a kind and deserves to be looked at if you haven't already. I'm the nostalgia critic, and term month nader month day has just begun. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, I don't know why I never really looked at 
Terminator is a horror movie, but I guess the first one is really kind of supposed to be, isn't it? Well, yeah, I mean, because the suspense is there because of just, like, the unknown of, like, what the Terminator's capable of. I just kind of looked at it as more of, like, a sci-fi action thriller, I guess. But... Yeah, it, well, it's multi-layered horror as well because there's the horror of the machine that is stalking you, but then there's also the prospect of the horror of the future and, you know, you're... you. Like, you are now having the knowledge that you are responsible for helping save the future. Mm. And the horror of that, just like the, the spine-chilling reality that, you know, the future is coming and there's not really anything you can do about it. Terminator still holds up, man. It's, it's one of the best films of that decade, and I think people can look back on it, and while it is dated in some regards, it is timeless in... The majority of its of its parts i yeah i still hold it up as a, just a stamp of just like great filmmaking this one's often cited like the first two are great the third one is okay but the ending makes it a lot better in terms of just like the shock of the ending it's just right. like like that was like oh my god the third one's barely memorable to me compared to the first two though uh, I guess, uh, but... I can't recall anything specific from it. Like, there, there's some like action set pieces from movies. it. The the crane uh, the crane spot uh, with the, uh, you know, in traffic was awesome. Although, looking back, the CG on the crane is a little bit eh. But still, though, I, I love the... Um, I, I love the ending more than anything. Yeah. And I really wish that we had a little... Like, I really wish that... We had a little bit more to it, but eh, for what it is, it's not the worst thing out there. That's reserved for everything that comes after the third one. Because <laughs> there is not really a good film amongst any of the ones that came after. I mean, Terminator uh, Salvation, Terminator Dark Fate, and then uh, what was the one with uh, Christian Bale? I forget what. Salvation. You said it was, Salvation first. Or Salvation. Dark Fate. Dark Fate. Genesis. Or Genesis. I, sorry, Genesis, yeah. Couldn't remember that one. And I just remember watching all those and just being like... It's like they're trying to figure out what to do with the Terminator series to like make it more future-proof. But in doing that, they're just... They're kneecapping the... They're kneecapping it. And it's like Amelia Clark as Linda Han As like Sarah Connor. That's great future-proofing because Amelia Clark is still young and she's a popular actress. But then, who do you hire as uh, as uh, uh, who do you hire as uh, as Kyle Reese, Jai Courtney, who I'm sorry, has the emotional range of a kumquat. I I I can't think of anything he's been in that has just made me go, wow. I really remember that guy for not being a bland board, you know, cardboard actor. But getting Arnold back was uh, was cool for that one. I'm glad they were able to do that. Um, but needless to say, it's just, ugh. There's so much potential with the Terminator franchise that has just been stripped to the bone and now is, there's nothing left that I can really say holds up. At, at least in my opinion. But at least we have these films to look back on. At least we have this one and the second one, which, you know, we'll see if we can't get to the second, uh, the, the Terminator 2 uh, review by the Nostalgia Critic in the future, but for right now, I think that's going to do it. So, everyone, I want to thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, be sure to uh, turn your pencils in at the end of the day, uh, lay your papers face down, and as always, be good people. Bye-bye.